I really like it when I have the opportunity to jump into a group or an artist completely blind. So this is going to be exciting for me because I am completely blind on the artist and the group, but I know the song really well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing their take on it, how they approach it, what genre this is going to be in. It's going to be great. So let's get into this one. This is Casey Chambers rapping or singing or somehow performing Lose Yourself, an Eminem cover at the Civic Theater in Newcastle, Australia. Wait, I don't hear anything. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds folksy. Is she country? We're going to lose yourself as a country song? Like bluegrass? Well, his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already, mom's spaghetti, and he's nervous. But on the surface, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd rolls so loud. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out, and he's choking now. Everybody's choking now, and the clock's run out. Time's up. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, there goes rabbit. He's choked. He's so mad, but he won't give up that easy. No, he won't. Have it, he knows his hope backs to these ropes. It don't matter, he's stoked. He knows that he's broke, he's stagnant. He knows when he goes back to his mobile home, it's back to the lab again. Oh, this old rhapsody better go capture this moment and hope it don't pass him. No, we're going to, no, no, no. We're not going to rush through this one, guys. If you're if you're here to watch this, I hope you don't mind a nice, relaxed, like deliberate watch because I'm going to be taking this in. I might back up really far a couple of times because I want to go back pretty much to the beginning. I, I don't think you'll mind, but if you do, I'm so sorry. <laughs> from the perspective of a performance coach, from a, the perspective of an acting coach, if I were working with somebody, talking to them about stage presence and communication and committal and, and emotional context and all these kind of things and connecting with an audience, I wouldn't have anything to say. This is an incredible uh, example of somebody who is owning the emotional beats of a text, which would be the lyrics in their entire body. What's great about this to me is that this song, now we got the rap version of this, right? And obviously the verses are lingering a little bit because in a rap song, you get a ton more words crammed into a smaller space than you do in a traditional song that's sung. But while the while the original was, of course, faster paced and a little harder hitting and it felt very inspirational, the lyrics are relatable and a little depressing, but certainly emotional impactful. Anybody who's had that kind of struggle, anybody who's fought tooth and nail just to buy formula or diapers or or you know keep the lights on to buy a single Christmas present, that kind of struggle stays with you like forever. It never really leaves you. It, it never really gives you any kind of respite. Once you've experienced the trauma of barely being able to feed your kid, worrying that they're going to be hungry when they're finished with their food because you don't have anything else to give them. It's a kind of trauma that you only experience as an adult, and in that way, it's a little unique. And only experiencing it as an adult, it's a trauma that sticks with you and is incredibly vivid, can be very motivational, but it can also be crippling. And it's a trauma that sparks an intense panic or fear uh, anytime the possibility or the suggestion of the possibility of you ending up back in that situation again kind of just pops up out of nowhere. If you're lucky enough to get out of that situation in the first place, it's a very impactful and affecting and long-lasting life experience. So that's a really long-winded way of saying that it's relatable. But in the original, we bop our heads along to it. It's kind of empowering and it's it's exciting and it's like, yeah, we're going to lose ourselves in the moment, whatever. It's It pumps you up. This is intensely and intentionally focusing nearly entirely on the desperation, on the pain. It's an incredible example of how instrumentation, melody, tempo can 
completely alter the way we experience a piece of music. How one piece of music, just because it was performed a certain way once and gave a certain impression and created a certain feeling and provoked certain emotions, you tweak it. If you put yourself into it, if you put your own personal stamp on it, it can completely transform into something totally different. And the audience will have a completely new experience. And I have no idea what's coming, but this new experience is going to break me. I have a feeling I am emotionally weak at the moment, guys. And I've talked for so long. He won't have it, he knows his hope backs to these ropes. It don't matter, he's stoked. He knows that he's broke, he's stagnant. He knows when he goes back to his mobile home. Mobile, love that. Back to the lab again. No, this old rhapsody better go capture this moment and hope it don't pass him. There's so much desperation in her voice. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. Better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow this opportunity comes. Those little cries are killing me. Once in a life. Time. Okay, so those little cries and the little inflections and things, the color that she's putting on her voice is insane and beautiful, and it's kind of affecting me physically. I love it so much. There's so much desperation in her voice. It's all over her face. This is a woman, I guarantee it, who has known struggle. She's known hard times, and it's all coming out of her right now. All of the the panic days and, and the hungry nights and the desperation of not knowing what to do, but knowing you're not allowed to ask, it's it's a really intense experience. I know I've talked about that a lot already, but it's all over her face. It's in every part of her face and it's deeply ingrained in her voice, that sense of desperation, of sorrow and grief and the feeling of being lost or even hopeless. She's doing an amazing job, an amazing job. And I love that the instruments came in there at that exact moment. I was wondering what was gonna happen arrangement wise i love changes like that we're always listening for the change okay i'm done rambling we're gonna go back and listen to the chorus one more time because i wanna that's why if you don't want to hear it i understand i completely get it her voice has a little tremble in it Once in a life. sounds like pain the soul is escaping through the soul that is gaping this world is mine for the taking And make me king as we move toward him A new world order A normal life is boring But superstardom is close to postmodern He only grows harder He only grows harder He blows its all over these holes It's all on him Coast to coast show <laughs> I'm not going to say much this time. I'm just going to say that there are moments in that verse when she was crying, like weeping. It was 
evident in her voice. She was expressing the kind of pain that comes out in a deep, tortured wail. And she did it in such a small way. She's not blowing the roof off the place. She's not belting. She's not singing super loud or anything. Nothing big is happening, but she's communicating this incredibly intense sorrow. Desperation is a good word for it. Grief, maybe. It's not really, it's not really grief. That doesn't fit. It's really intense sorrow, disillusionment. And yes, I think in this verse more than the other, and very clearly this time, I sense a deep feeling of powerlessness, which definitely fits with the lyrics. But we're going to go back and hear some of those cries again because they were insane. Father goes home and barely knows right his own daughter, but hold your nose because he goes oh. to water. His souls go on him no more. He's no pride. Listen to her on the word here. Daughter, but hold your nose because he goes to water. She's crying. So Weeping, guys, weeping. Oh, if I'm ready for this, for this chorus. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. Better never let it go. Only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow this opportunity. Come once in a life. Here it comes. It's not exactly what I was expecting, but that's amazing. Here we go. Oh my God, this is going to be. This is going to be so good. The intensity of this is going to be insane. I can already, I can already feel it. No more games, I'm a change. The anger in her voice. Tear this motherfucking roof off like two dogs cage, and I was playing in the beginning. And the mood all changed while well, I've been wow. food up and spit out and booed off stage. But I can't cry when it's never right the next cipher. Best believe somebody's paying the pipe piper all this pain inside amplified by the fact that I can't get by with my nine to five and I can't provide the right type of life. No. Mm -mm. I'll be right back. If you're new here, you may not know that I'm a dad. I have two kids, a son and a daughter. I had them pretty young. My daughter was born when I was 20. I was married to her mom. Me and her had another kid. Very quickly afterwards, they're only 19 months apart. The absolute world to me, both of them are. You can skip this. I'm going to leave this in the YouTube edit, but I'll put a time code if you want to skip this. But this is a, a story that I feel like I, I need to tell right now. And then we're going to go back again and listen to that again. And I'll talk more about how insane that was 
after that listen. But for this break, my daughter was in dance. She was in ballet and tap when she was very young. We put her in dance when she was three. And every year after her end of season recital, which they had two a year, we would take her to McDonald's or CeCe's Pizza or some other restaurant that she just loved and get her whatever she wanted, basically. My son, of course, uh, was a little younger, but he was in dance at this point too. But we had a really bad time that year. I had real challenges and it was my job to provide. It was my job to make sure that they had what they needed and could get what they wanted. And I was failing at that job, as so many do, for so many reasons. I had, like, I can't remember exactly anymore, but I know that I had enough in my pocket to buy a four-piece nugget, a cheeseburger, one medium French fry, and two kid-sized drinks. And when I say enough, I mean barely enough. And my daughter is amazing, always has been. Even when she didn't have a full grasp of what it meant, she knew when I was hurting. And she could usually tell, if not why exactly, she could tell around what. You know what I mean? And she was so gracious and gave me the biggest smiles. And she treated that meal, that hamburger and half a thing of fries, she treated it like it was a huge deal, like it was a big treat. Her and my son both. My son a little less so. He just kind of followed her lead, which was amazing. But listening to this verse, I've never done that before with the Eminem version. With the Eminem version, I've never been taken to a place emotionally like that. I've been affected by it, sure, but again, the tone, the mood of it is all completely different. This took me back to a place when I was hawking CDs, a dollar a piece, just to put five bucks in the car to get back and forth to work, when the only thing we had in the house to eat was discount cans of, of Chef Boyardee, some potatoes, bread. This performance. I'm not going to talk about the actual performance just yet because I feel like I should listen to a little bit of the song. I shouldn't pause it for too long, even though I'm pausing it for forever, because you guys are going to get bored of hearing me talk. And uh, you probably already are. That's fine. I get it. But it's my channel. There was a timestamp. You know, I do this sometimes. I sit in silence and I don't know how much of it to cut out, how much of it to leave in. I don't know what you guys want to see. Uh, so I usually leave in a little snippet, just enough for you to see that I did sit for a while in time past. Now you'll get that explanation. It's a fine line between boring you and giving you a genuine reaction. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch that incredibly passionate, fierce performance one more time. And then we'll talk about after the whole thing's over, I'll wait till the end. We'll talk about her. Her. We'll talk about her. All that she is. We'll talk about that performance because I want to right now so bad, but I won't. It's incredible. I'm afraid to press. I'm afraid to press play. <laughs> I meant it when I said I was going all the way back. Guys. Games, I'm a Time what you call rage, tear this motherfucking roof off. There's so like much two dogs resentment in her voice now. Completely different tone than before. Head up. Love that, right? That was a brilliant choice. And this.
what the hell was that? No, 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 no. We're going to go right back. Sorry. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. And in a minute, go. You only get one shot to laugh. It's your dance of love. It's opportunity come. Fuck me, man. Jesus Christ. What the hell, bro? Like, for real, dude. No, okay, one more time. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. Dude, this woman is insanely incredible. You only get one shot tonight. It's your chance to blow. It's opportunity to blow. One in a lifetime. You better lose yourself in the music. Gosh, she's making me dizzy, bro. Where did this come from? And has Eminem seen this? God, I think he would love this. Dude. Dude. Dude, you ain't have to be so nasty with that song. You you didn't have to beat it like that. You didn't have to. There was no cause to go that hard. There was no. There was no reason for that. Jesus, my gosh, you. I'm, I want to. I want to hear other things. I want to hear something else. What do I want? I want to hear something else. For real. Subscribe like all the things, click the bell, do all that stuff. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's incredible. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So just really briefly, let's talk about the vocals and the actual performance, because I didn't really touch on that a lot, but that last verse was so intense, so fierce, so much resentment and determination and anger. It went from hopelessness and grief to this fiery, intense, like consuming, devastating, devastating determination. That was insane. And I'll, I'll ask again, has Eminem heard this? Is this a thing that's been shared with him? Has he commented on it? Has there been any kind of chatter about that? Because I would love to know what he thinks. I'm sure I am 100% sure that he would absolutely love that. That's incredible. As an artist, you would love nothing more than for something that you made to be taken, reinterpreted and molded into something completely different, but still honoring the core of the song, right? The core of the message. That that's the most impressive thing to me about this. I guess the, in, the intensity, the fierceness, the way her facial expression was in that moment whenever she talked about grief in the last verse, she went from being angry to just having the most devastatingly heartbreaking expression. Uh, the woman is incredible, incredible. But one of the things that's just blowing me away altogether is the way she was able to take a song that was made with a particular intention, a particular message, but in a, a very specific style, completely strip it down. Not only... Is it in a different genre? And and it just sounds different. You can recognize it, but it was a completely different song melodically, like musically. But at the same time, it was a completely different song emotionally. It delivered an entirely different, an entirely new uh, emotional impact. And it touched a whole different place on the emotional spectrum. But while being completely 100% different, it maintained the essence of the core message. It maintained the grief, the frustration, the helplessness, the, the hopelessness, the feeling of powerlessness and impotency, and then the rage at the system that created that lack that comes with feeling marginalized and, and unjustly penalized and ignored kicked and beaten and left at the bottom, lied to and deceived by all of the American dream, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, lines of garbage that we get fed all the time. That sense is what I've always identified with in the song. And I identified with that exact same thing in this version, but in a completely different way, in a completely different way, a completely different perspective paradigm. The entire thing was shifted, turned on its head, and it 
was an entirely new experience, a new catharsis. The original was catharsis. It was very cathartic, 100%. This one incredibly was too, just in a whole different way. I am blown. I could sit here and ramble about how wonderful this song is probably for an hour. It just, I am flabbergasted. That's how good it is. I use the word flabbergasted. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really, really do. Please go to her page, go to her page, like comment. She's only got 23,000 subscribers. That's friggin' insane. Are you kidding me? That kind of pisses me off. Somebody better go subscribe to this woman. She friggin' deserves it. I can't believe that 23,000 subs. That video is by far her biggest with 481,000 views. It's been up for a year. I don't know where it's been. I didn't know it was up, but it's only got 400. This should have 5 million views after a year, five to 10 million. And she should be sitting on around 300,000 subscribers. Easy. I'm just looking at her page. I mean, she's got a lot of content going back, no, going back 13 years. And most of it has under 10,000 views. A lot of it has under 3,000 views. That's friggin' insane. Honey, you need to, you need to talk to your agent or your publicist or somebody because you need to be, you need some exposure. You need to be much bigger than this. That's you. I'm so, I feel like that's an injustice right there. I wish, I wish I was one of those reactors who have, you know, a million subscribers, 500,000 subscribers so that I could get this out to more people. But those of you who are watching, who happen to come across this, on my channel. Dude, go to her channel, subscribe to it, watch some videos, like them, send her some messages, tell her to friggin' to get back on the mic because the last upload that she had was five months ago. This is incredible. <laughs> this is insane. A link to her page is in the description as well as a link to all of my social medias, uh, my Patreon page where you can support the channel. The, there's PayPal links down there for Jump the Lines where you can request specific reactions to pretty much anything that I can access on the internet. I'll react to it. So send me an email first so I can tell you if I've seen it or not. And then you can tell me if you want me to react to it or not. And we can go from there for now. I'm just going to take this experience and sort of internalize it and sit with it for a long time. Maybe listen to the song three or four dozen more times, and I will see you guys in the next one. Please remember, as always, to be kind to each other, and most importantly, be kind to yourself.